I'm Jeff Koinange, and yes, this is Jeff Koinange Live. Tonight, the two latest members of parliament to enter the 11th house. That's right, up until a couple of days ago, my first guest was simply known as K1. Now he's Maheshimiwa K1, Stephen Kariuki from Madari constituency. And right next to him, a man who we all knew a few weeks ago as a mere hustler. Now look at him, MP. Yes, indeed, no longer MP-elect. He's been sworn in, MP from Gatundu South. Stephen Kariuki, Moses Kuria, Twitter handles are, oh, by the way, Moses Kuria, years ago, his Twitter handle was Honorable Moses Kuria. It's like he knew something we didn't know. Now we know. Stephen Kariuki's Twitter handle is S. Kariuki K1. And mine, of course, is at Koinanga Jeff. The hashtag is JKL. What do these two young people, that's right, 34 years old and 43 years old, respectively, what are they going to bring to the house barely three years? Yes, right, three years before the next election. It is time for Jeff Koinange Live. Gentlemen, welcome to the show. Thank you. Well, Thank congratulations, Mashua. Thank you. Well done, man. Well done. Appreciate it. You too, man. Thank you. You too. Yeah. Who would have thought? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go to you first. Yeah. Because you've been sworn in, Mashua. Yeah. You've been sworn in. First of all, how was the swearing in? How were well, you it was, received? It was, it was very interesting. Uh, I really have got so many friends in parliament <laughs> from, <laughs> from both sides of the divide. Yes. So I had a very rough time, you know, saying hi to everyone. Yeah. Most of them have been involved with the one thing or the other in the, in, you know, my... And I understand, fairly long I understand you sat next to Jacob Midiwo. Yeah, yeah. You, you know, sat next to him. I, I went to the court side and I said hi to some of my friends. And I couldn't resist, uh, you know, having a seat and an introduction to Jacob. <laughs> uh, all, all I didn't know is that the seat next to him yeah. was reserved for the day of the minority. And uh, Honorable Asman Kamama raised a, po uh, a point of order to the, to the effect that I'm sitting next to to the leader of the uh, to, to in the city reserve for the for the minority leader next to Jacoyo. <laughs> I didn't even know what to say because I had not made my maiden speech. Yeah. So I'm very grateful for Jacoyo because he offered an explanation. And what did he say? He said that he was actually teaching me one or two things about rules because where I've come from, I was not used to respecting rules. <laughs> so. <laughs> so it didn't matter then because, yeah. you know, yeah. uh, somebody had to say something to the, to the speaker. Right. And I have not yet made, made my maiden speech, so, you know, it was a little bit out of, you know, out of time for me to say something. Yeah. But it was interesting, and uh, I look forward to work with all those guys in, in that time. Well done, well done. Mojimiwa, K1. Yes, sir. You won by less than a thousand votes. Yes, I did. Was close? It was close. Did you, did, were you worried at some point? When, when Joe, he was coming, man, he was coming. No, uh, I was worried about the system. Yeah. Not about the votes, about the system. Mm. Yes. And in, But in the end, in the end you won. I won. Congratulations. And I won in 2013, by the way. Now that you brought that up, <laughs> they gave you a certificate in 2013. Yes. Declaring you the winner. Yes. And then they came back and said you hadn't won and took it back. They didn't take it back. I still have it today in the house. <laughs> you they, have the they just said they have revoked it. <laughs> So is this is this divine justice for you? Do you I, feel? I believe it is. Yeah. Two years late, but I believe it's it's justice. Hmm. Yes. How do you feel, man? How do you feel now? Thirty-four years old, MP-elect Mathare. You haven't been sworn in yet, right? No, tomorrow. Tomorrow is when the swearing in is being done. Uh, I'm excited and uh, honored to be able to serve my people of Mathare. Yes. And, and you know, for the viewers who don't know, I mean, look. You're 34, but you've been doing this for 10 years. You've been on the ground, you were saying, for the last 10 years. Since uh, 2005, during the first referendum that we had, mm -hmm. that's when I became politically engaged, but like politically active. And uh, since then, my mom went and became MP for the whole constituency. So I've been there working with the people since about 2005. Yeah. yeah. And those of you who don't know who his mother is, it's Bishop Margaret Wanjiro, who's probably in church right now at yes. GM, right? Yes. All yeah. right. If you're watching, Sunny has done all right. Wish more. Yeah. From heckler to MP, you know, people say, be careful what you wish for. You might get it. You may just get it. <laughs> yeah. I don't think that... Uh 
I think my, I, I view my election as just a change of posting of my position. You know, like a transfer. <laughs> I was in it. Yeah. I've just been told report to a new location called PO Box Parliament. National Assembly. National Assembly. <laughs> but yeah. for me, it's just yeah. a continuation of the same thing I've been doing. But did, look, your Twitter handle betrays you. Yeah. To use a, a, yeah, a like term. the last name betrays you. Yeah. Correct. I like that analogy. Yes. Uh, because you had called yourself Honorable Moses Courier from day one. Yeah, because I knew that um, if I really wanted to go to Parliament a few years back, I would have done that. Be it in my beloved Gatundu South or in, in Madare, where I've just <laughs> let him get away with it. <laughs> but uh, but uh, yeah. so I, I, as I told you last time, when I was joining Twitter, I, there was no other handle to take. Because Moses Kuria was taken, Mr. Moses Kuria was taken. <laughs> and the only one I could think of was yeah. Honorable Moses Kuria. Yeah. Uh, so I, I just think that sometimes if you do something, it's better to come back and ratify. So for me, this was just a ratification of my Twitter handle. Now you guys are going to be on opposite sides of the aisle, aren't you? Yep. Well, well I hope not, but... Uh, well, yeah, oh, you will, you will. ODM, TNA, yeah, yeah. right? Definitely, definitely. Right, yeah. right. Are, are, you, are you ready to, to, to battle these guys? Because there's a lot of stuff you guys need to iron out in there, eh? I'm ready to battle them as long as uh, we're battling on issues and agendas that... Uh, affect Kenyans and my people of Madare. Mm. Yes. What's the big thing you want to go in there with? Because obviously you're the rookie, you're the new guy, you're the new kids on the block. What's the one big thing you want to be remembered for? And I know it's early days, but you want to push for in the next three years. First of all, I want to take Parliament work seriously. And I can tell you that Parliament can do much more in terms of taking its work seriously. In terms of what I would call productivity. I still hope within my term to pass a bill uh, to increase the working hours of that parliament. 16 hours a week, how many hours do you work? Uh, many. 16 hours a week is what you have to 16 work. hours? Yeah. Week? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Divide by five? No, four plus four plus eight. That's all parliament has to meet in terms of the chamber. And Would I you want to increase it to? Uh, maybe around 24. I think we can do it, you know, just maybe 50% increase will not harm. I know there is uh, the argument that we spend ma mo mo uh, much time on the on the, the committees, constituency, on the co mm. constituency mm. parts, and also the committees. Yeah. Uh, but but I still, still do believe that, you know, even if I spend two days on committees, my constituents will not uh, know, you know, that that is what was happening. They still know that we didn't see you on chamber that time. Mm. So I still want to see a situation whereby we have got more balance between chamber time, committee time, and constituency time. But much more. Your Madara constituency is, yes. is probably one of the toughest, toughest in every way you look at it. Yes. Poverty, unemployment, youth, you name it. Tough, tough place. It's uh, one of the toughest, but I believe I'm um, up to the task. And uh, unlike my friend here, I would rather spend more time with my constituents, but still be able to represent them ably within parliament. Yeah, yeah because what? Your biggest problem in Gatondo South is what, jiggers maybe, or? No, 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 no. that's the <laughs> usual stereotype. We have got real issues in Gatondo, like roads, like water, like uh, unemployment for the youth, just like we have in Madare. Um, we have a problem with the, with the, with the issue of uh, people not knowing exactly how to access government, uh, gov government services and resources. It's still, the work is cut out for me just like any other constitution. Speaking of cut out, and I'm glad you raised that, you guys, you're coming in a year and change in, which is a slight disadvantage. Do you feel it's, it's going to be tough adjusting before getting stuff done? Uh, we've lost two years as a constituency. Yeah. We only have three years. And within that time, during the next election, no one will remember there was a by-election. Everyone will want to know what have you done mm. for the people. Mm. So for us, or at least for myself, we have to work twice as hard. We have to burn the midnight oil. We have to make sure we've represented our people well. We have to make sure we've made a difference, we've made a change. But I believe the time is more than sufficient to make an impact and for people to realize the true leadership that we, that we offer. When your mom was running for office and she did it for a few years, a few yeah. terms, I mean, did, didn't you look at what she was doing and say, I, I don't want to get into this, man. Politics is a tough, tough job. I actually loved it. Really? I actually loved it. And I used to help her. When she was a bit too busy, I would handle a few of the things at the constituents without even having an office. 
I'll just take up my role as K1. What I need to do is to help my ideas with you. What did you tell Wanjohi after you won? What, what, what was the reason? I, I haven't met him. I'm, uh, I'm considering I'll give him a call maybe over the weekend. Yeah. I'll give him a call. He's got a call? He's got a call. He's got a SMS. But luckily, you have gotten what? About a thousand text messages for the last two days. 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 The last two days, yes. More than a thousand text messages. More, more than a thousand text messages, uh, more than a thousand WhatsApp and missed calls. Kibao. Lakini pole pole na Rudisha. Yeah. You know, they say you were not elected. They say you were selected, Moses Courier. Those was a selection. There was, you know, nobody lined up. So what was I supposed to do? <laughs> <laughs> Photocopy myself and create another candidate? I didn't have an opponent, that's all. <laughs> so maybe if you have an idea how to have done, yeah. that's fine. Yeah. You call it election, you call it selection. I am the member for the best for Katuna. <laughs> and nobody can take that away from nobody you. Nobody can that. But you know what? I, I can't believe you. You were on TV regularly as an analyst, as the yeah. TNA pseudo spokesman. And now you've got this job, man. I mean, how does that happen? Well, tomorrow you never know you can be a preacher. <laughs> Today you are here, you know. <laughs> that, is, that is the staff of life, you know. Yeah. Today uh, you're on JKL, tomorrow you're on GM, maybe deputizing you know, <laughs> my good friend, you know, Bishop <laughs> the Bishop, you know. So, that's the staff of life, you know. Yeah. Now. Did you, did, did you have political aspirations when you were doing all your TV and, and, and all your... Well, I, I knew one day I would yeah. have to fight my head point. Uh-huh. And I knew it would have to be either in one, one of the elective positions. Um, I was contemplating uh, the last one. 13. But you know, I was very busy with the presidential election, so I had to, to shelve my ambition that time. And definitely I would have vied in 2017. You would have, huh? Yeah, I would have vied. So this was divine election. intervention? Well, 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 it was fate. Fate would have it. Fate, 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 fate. I like calling him a, a nominated MP. <laughs> <laughs> he's, uh, I represent he's not, uh, he's not nominated yes. 60,000 voters yeah. of the Tolu South. Is that what it is? Yeah, 60,000 voters. Um, yeah, they know no other MP except myself. And you, 88,000? 88, 88,000. The only nominated MP with a constituency. <laughs> well, <laughs> who nominated me, by the way? <laughs> who nominated me? I, I thought you were selected. Who yeah. by? <laughs> so, have you been congratulated by your party chiefs, you know, Sakaja, the rest of the gang? Yeah, I had lunch with Sakaja today. Okay. Yeah, I had lunch with Sakaja. And, yeah. uh, and the president? Uh, well, when we were having lunch, he passed by today, just by fit. What do you Can't mean he passed that. by? Yeah, yeah, he had... Were you at State House? Or? No, no, it's uh, here, in the, in the, at the Intercontinental, at the KICC. I was just having lunch with Sakaja and he passed by and said, oh, congratulations. Did he congratulate you? Yes, he did. And the deputy president as well. And uh, from there, you just let everybody go to their job. My posting is pure private back National Assembly. And his <laughs> address is pure private back State House. And <laughs> everybody goes to do their own job, you know. <laughs> How about your party leaders? Have they congratulated you? Yes, yes, they have. Uh, yep. I met them and they congratulated me. Yep. And uh, I'm looking forward to the task ahead for my mm. uh, mother. Court leader, yes. former prime minister, has he congratulated you? Yes, he has. Nice, yes, nice. He has. And I saw Kenneth Akoff, you know, my friend from Kibra. Yes. He was very uh, vocal on, uh, on, uh, on election night. Very, very. There was uh, Ken Okoth, there was uh, TJ Kajuang, there was uh, Weshimiwa <laughs> Sumbra. Mishimiwa <laughs> Simba Rati, yeah. um, a lot of MCAs that came to the ground, mm. and uh, there was a large group of people. Yeah. yeah. And, and contrary to popular opinion, and I hate to bring this up, but you know, we have to talk, ethnicity is a way of life here. You got a lot of Tikuyu votes, didn't you? Let's face it. Uh, I believe I did. Yeah. I believe I did. So, so at the end of the day, hopefully, it doesn't matter which party you're in. It's who you are. The individual, uh, the person, and what they offer in terms of leadership. Yeah, what they offer in terms of solutions to our people's problems. Are regardless, you regardless of tribe. Yeah. Yes. Are you going to do that, Moshimiwa? Because, you know, we come back to Madare. Madare, anyone who speaks of Madare, it's a problem area. Yes. Lots of challenges. Yes. Lots and lots of problems. Yes. Can you do it? By the time I'm done with Madare constituency, I intend to make sure I've changed that. I intend to make sure we have a success story from Madare. Our youths, our women, our old men, our infrastructure, uh, 
our our engagement insecurity uh, empowering our people in terms of resources uh, we have a very hard working population very hard working actually one of the most hard working population in this nation they wake up four in the morning some are headed to industrial area some are headed to ECLE some are headed to a different place every morning back and forth looking for you know a way to earn a living but what they lack is uh, opportunities for them to engage and put that energy in place yeah. and I'm, I'm here to make sure i provide that can we hold you accountable to that Mwishimura? can you can we say a year from now we'll meet and we'll say hey what have you done for your people i actually want to be held accountable and that is what all constituents in this country should do to their members of parliament yeah. hold them accountable that way we are, we are forced to work and we have to work. There are promises I made I intend to deliver. There are uh, differences in the systems of uh, government that I intend to implement and I plan to deliver. So all those things put in place, we put our systems in place and we engage with our people and I believe I'll get it done. I'm uh, determined to get it done. You're determined. Yes. How about you, Mr. Heckler? Are you going to fulfill your promises? Um, you know, I have got a slight advantage. Uh, because in my constituency there was uh, the same party was in power, so to speak, mm -hmm. because the, the, the rate was from TNA. And so I'm able to adopt actually most of the working systems because, you know, the circumstances are very different from, 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 from Madari. This yeah. was a uh, demise of, of, of the rate MPs. So I made one decision, uh, which is first of all to retain the team that was working with the, with the rate MPs and I promised them I'm going to make zero personnel changes. You're uh, going to retain the team? All of it intact because what matters is the vision so that helps me to save the time of which my good unless you know he really wants to keep or enjoy his team you know, which i think is it's gonna be a little bit you know, challenging for him but yeah. uh, i have that advantage that i can just you know keep the team the way it was just continue with the project that it was complete the project that we, we had a meeting a very good meeting yesterday with, with the entire team and we just you know just sort of continuation yeah. of course i come with an advantage because uh, other than the management of the constituency through the CDF and uh, the roads uh, committee that was happening, I, I, I want to spend um, some time also trying to unlock some few benefits from national government. Well, it really makes a difference for you to be in government uh, and to be in the opposition like my friend yeah. here. So, to be on the inside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So really I want to, to knock some few doors. Can, and, I, uh, can I assure you I'll also unlock a few resources from the national government. Oh, very good. That's, you see <laughs> what kind of government you have. It's a good government yeah. that has... You know, yeah. Yeah, no borders, yeah. but uh, all inclusive, and, and all the inclusive. county and the county government, yeah, and, county government. Yeah, and, and the, the county, county government, government as well. Gentlemen, so yeah. you know, um, the issue of working together between myself as a member of parliament, my governor, and the national government is very important mm. and very critical. Mm. Uh, unlike what we've seen in some some places where the, a lot of antagonism between between the, the various levels of government, I do want to spend a lot of time to to create some working relationship between all the levels of government. Yeah. Yes. Gentlemen, I want to take a break, come back, and I want to ask you both the one thing, the one thing you want to do to change your constituency's lives between now and 2017. Think about it when you come back. And also, let's take some tweets. Let's take some tweets. Let's yeah. listen to what the people are saying. Yeah. Good grief, is this Moses Courier or is that his twin brother? <laughs> I see Parliament changes people. Eh? Yeah. You become kinder and gentler. Yeah. Yeah, huh? yeah you know you have to mellow with age. <laughs> Honorable Moses Courier at S Karaoke K1 at Koinanga Jeff. The hashtag is JKL. This is Jeff Koinanga live when we're talking to the two latest members of parliament to enter the August House. And they're young too, 34 and 43 respectively. That's right, this is no doubt the future of Kenya. Anyway, you want to slice it. JKL takes a break. We'll be back with more of your tweets. Keep them coming back in a moment.